Hello, today we're taking a look at Graphing Calculator by MathLab. This is a free app in the Google Play Store and is a graphing calculator with algebra that is an essential tool for school and college because it replaces that bulky and expensive handheld graphing calculator all with one application here. Now we're going to go ahead and dive right into the primary portion of the app, which is that of the keyboard here. So you can see you have a full-on QWERTY keyboard within the app. You have your symbols here. You can also hide the keyboard if you want more room for your workspace. You simply just tap this button right here. Or what you can actually do is just click it out and then slide it across the app. Now keep in mind this works in portrait or landscape mode here. Now of course you have your main uh, with the numerical keypad, the expressions and all of that. And this is a big portion of the application in itself because the keyboard acts uh, has a lot of different functions here. So you can actually hold on specific buttons to go into specific modes. For example, going and clicking the trig button will bring you into that of the trigonomic functions. If you want to get hyperbolic functions, you tap on the E here, and now you'll see there it'll change the sine, cosine, tangent to blue. Now if I hold on something like sine, for example, you can see I get more options. So arc sinus, I also get cosecant. So I can simply just drag left or right to get to those options. The same thing would be that for cosine or tangent. If I was to hold those, you can see I get arc, tangent, cotangent also available just by holding down on that one button. So a lot of these act as double buttons just by holding onto them simply here, cosine, again, you hold onto it, you get the other options available and you can simply swipe left or right for those functionalities within the application here. Now other options, again, you have some other things here, for example, like first derivative and second derivative, you can just choose between the two by holding and letting go on the X here. Also, you have the variables, if you want to get more variables, you hold on X, you have options for Y, X, Z, R, etc. And of course, going down here, we'll go into, for example, the cubes. If you want to type in any other cubes or roots, so for example, if I was to tap this, you just get the square root, but if I hold it, you get other options, and I can easily change that number. So if I was to say root of 6, in this case, and give it a number like 64, you can see that will automatically equal 2. Now, clicking on I here is for entering functions to, with complex numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and clear that, show that. If I hold it down, you can see I get some other options available here. If I was to exit that, we go down over to this right here. This is for matrices and working for matrices and for uh, vectors here. So you can just hold on to that and get those other options available or just tap on it for that. And again, moving down, you also have your parentheses, of course, on the right here. But if you hold those, you also have options for curly brackets, if that's what you want to choose there. And last but not least here, you have ln for logarithms. So this is using for this is used for counting different kinds of logarithms. So for example, we can hold it here to get the options. Let's give an example here. Let's go ahead and put brackets 3, hold it, get the bracket here, 27. And you can see it will equal 3, because in this case, 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. With that, let's go ahead and break it down into the four different modes available in the app. You have, of course, your calculator mode, graph mode, table, and library. So in calculation mode, this allows you to do things like counting roots, exponents, etc. Where you go ahead and type in an equation here, just to showcase. And you can see there, it shows out the form, it shows out the equation. So here we are in the graphing mode, so we can easily just go ahead and type in 3 cosine as we do in here, for parentheses four, hold the variable, go over here, and you can see as we do that, it inputs the graph here. Here we are in table mode here, so we can of course just put on, for example, sine x, you can see it'll generate the columns here, I can jump over to the next row over here, and we'll go ahead and type in cosine x, and it'll generate those columns as well there. Last but not least, we have the library mode, which can be used to enter and save things like your own constants, functions, and or expressions in this library so that they can be used in the future uh, whenever you need to use them or reference them again. Now, going back to the interface, you also notice there's a one, two, three. These represent the workspace. You can have multiple workspaces to lay out your equations here. So you can see, for example, in the first workspace, we have it and it's showing an example of counting a first derivative equation. The second workspace has that of a second derivative. And in the last, or a space here, we have it showing an example of it counting by powers, in this case, negative one. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the graph here. So, so I'm gonna do some, so for example, I'm gonna do 2x to the power of two, in this case, plus 3x minus five. You can see, as we do that, it will automatically show us here in the graph and plots it out for us. You can easily just adjust that and view it as is. So in this case, we have our quadratic equation here graphed out. But keep in mind, if you tap on this little square right here next to the equation, what it's going to go ahead and do, it's going to go ahead, if I 
go ahead and zoom out and we're going to go ahead and hide the keyboard here so it's a little bit easier to see. It's going to go ahead and give us more detailed information. You can see when you click that square, it's going to show you, uh, you see the check mark and the app shows the root, the numbers that make the function equal zero and its critical points in this case. Next up, let's go ahead and look at a cubic equation here. So graphing that, so we'll go x to the power of 3 minus 8 here to the power of 2 plus, we'll say, 49 here. I'm going to go ahead and let that sit, and I'm going to go ahead and hide the keyboard now so you can easily see it over here. And by hitting this check mark right here next to the equation in the top left, you can see it now shows that of the root of the function along with that of the point of inflection on the graph here. So to recap here, we've taken a look at the interface and the ins and outs of the application from the keyboard to the multiple features that it packs into it, scientific calculator, graphing calculator, fraction, and so on. But really, it features two great strengths. First off, it acts as a fine scientific calculator, but more than that, it displays intermediate results of your calculations as you type. With this capability, the student can watch and learn how their calculations behave in real time. So as they type out their equation here, it shows them real-time feedback, not only the answer, but it works out the problem right in front of them in the workspace easily. And again, real-time feedback. As soon as you tap these equations and buttons here, the inputs, automatically you get the output on screen via the application. The app's second strength is its graphing capability. We took a look at its graphing capabilities earlier on, but it's really stunning in the fact that not only are the graphs beautifully displayed, but the X and Y values are automatically generated and displayed as you type in again in real time. As you see here, the graphs automatically generate your equation here, and you can go on, move on to the next one, and it'll plot everything for you in real time. Very simple and very easy here, and again, in a beautiful display, whether you're in landscape or portrait mode. Also, keep in mind that to show tracing graph value, it's as simple as moving your finger from the y-axis here across to the right, and you'll see that the additional vertical line emerges from that y-axis. This line is parallel to the y-axis, and when the vertical line intersects the graph of this function, you can see the number nearby. This number is the value of the function at its current point. If the vertical line then intersects several graphs, it shows the value of all of those graphs. So that about sums up Graphing Calculator by MathLab. Again, this is a free app in the Google Play Store. You can also check out the Pro Upgrade available via a $5.99 in-app upgrade to get more features, etc. Again, this is a scientific calculator, a graphing calculator, a fraction calculator, algebra calculator, matrix calculator, and more, all in one easy to use, powerful application. You can find this in the Google Play Store today.